Happy Easter and welcome to St. Michael. We offer a special welcome to all visitors who are with us this morning. The funeral for John Leggett will be on Friday at 11 a.m. Divine Mercy Sunday will be celebrated next Sunday. St. Nicholas in Newmarket will be hosting it this year. Please see the bulletin for more information. Join us on April 8th as we welcome Father Steve McMichael, who will give a presentation about Mary Magdalene as the model of resurrection faith. Father Steve is a Franciscan friar living at the Franciscan Retreat Center in Prior Lake and teaches theology at the University of St. Thomas. Join us for April Fest on April 27th. We are in need of volunteers as well as prize and other Amazon wish list items. Please see the bulletin for more information. Let us rise and sing together number 457 in the Maroon Gather hymnal, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Number 457. Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of the risen Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. My friends, we gather to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we begin our prayer, we remember that he came to save us from our sins. We pause to reflect on how we have sinned. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those who oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. This is the day, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice, let us rejoice and be
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and he believed, for they did not yet understand the scriptures that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. I just love a full house. It's great. It all started with Mary of Magdala. This year, we're invited to proclaim either St. Mark's Gospel to tell the resurrection story, which we did last night, or St. John's resurrection story, which we did this morning. Now, some of you may have noticed they're very different than the stories we heard earlier in the week. That is, on Palm Sunday, St. Mark's Passion Story. Good Friday, St. John's Passion Story. The Passion Story is much more elaborate, much more detail about the pain and suffering and rejection that Jesus went through on the way to his cross. They all end, of course, with Jesus' body being placed in a tomb. But the next part of the story begins, as I said, with Mary Magdalene. And unlike the Passion accounts, we don't get a lot of details about what happened, how it happened, so forth. We know that Mary and others went to tomb early Sunday morning to 
Do what people who are mourning do to anoint the body of Jesus. They didn't really have a plan how they would move the great stone that blocked the tomb when they got there. Simply, at this point, I guess they were lost, confused, and going to the tomb seemed to be the right thing to do. But the stone had been rolled away. Mark tells of a young man in a white robe who told the women, he has been raised, he is not here. They're told to go and tell the disciples what has happened. But John's account makes it clear that Mary of Magdala didn't quite yet realize what was going on. She thought the body of Jesus had been stolen. So then, Peter and the disciple whom Jesus loved had to go and see for themselves, as men often do. And we're t- that got a bigger laugh last night. <laughs> and we're told that Peter saw the empty tomb He saw the wrappings, the discarded burial clothes, and you can tell something's going on there. But the other disciple, we think it's John, saw and believed. In the early weeks of of Easter, next few weeks, we'll hear other stories of encounters with the risen Christ himself. And again, there won't be a lot of details, but we'll learn that some others were able to see and believe. But what seems clear in all of this is that something incredible started with Mary of Magdala. She was the first one to go out and tell that something had happened with Jesus. Again, still figuring it out. Now, many of you know all the wonderful things that are published by Bishop Robert Barron. He's got a whole series of Uh, talks and books and so forth on the evidence of the resurrection, the proof of the resurrection, on why the story must be true. And there, there are fascinating details in his talks, his writings. However, ultimately, the resurrection cannot be proven. It must be believed as a matter of faith. And like Mary and Peter and John and others, we too have to see and choose to believe. Now, many of you are aware that we had an unusually large number of funerals since 2024 began. And I've been spending a lot of time with people wandering around like Mary Magdalene and others just doing what they're supposed to be doing and trying to make sense of what has happened. And I know what I believe But I can only invite them to that same faith, that those we love are not lost. As followers of Jesus, death is not the end for them or for us. No tomb could hold him. No tomb will be able to hold us who believe in him. And now I ask, who invited you here today? For many of us, that invitation was extended long ago through parents and grandparents and generations of believers. For Lon and Dan, who were baptized here last night, that invitation came from beloved family members. Now, there are some here today, I'm sure, who aren't quite sure why you're here or what you believe. Maybe there's a struggle going on with faith but it's good that you're here. It's good that you're here. And I assure you that you can go and read all kinds of books and videos and podcasts that will tell you what you should believe and why, but ultimately it's your choice to make. It's your choice to be a person of faith. And thanks be to God, we have been invited by many different people in many different ways to make that choice. It's been happening ever since Mary Magdala first ran from the tomb. However, I assure you, your life will be changed forever when you make that choice that Jesus has been raised from the dead, that those who believe in him will not die, but will have new life. And then you too need to go out and invite others to come and see and believe in the risen Lord who has saved us.
My dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. Now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. Now most of you know by now, we don't just ask questions and say, I do. We sing, certainly Lord, certainly Lord, certainly, certainly, certainly Lord. You can follow the choir. Reject old Satan and all his words and all his empty promises. He is the father of sin, he is the prince of darkness. You reject old Satan. God, the Father Almighty, who created heaven and earth. You believe in Jesus, His only Son, of the Virgin Mary. He was crucified, bowed his head and died, but he rose on Easter. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. You believe in Jesus. God's Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints. Can God forgive sin? Can God raise the dead? Can God give life everlasting? This is our faith. We are proud to profess it in Jesus Christ. Oh, certainly, certainly. Oh, certainly, certainly. This is our faith. Certainly, no. Certainly, certainly. And now we will be sprinkled with our new Easter water as a reminder of that day we were baptized into Jesus Christ.
gather filled with Easter joy, we know that there are many in the world that need our help, our prayers. Let us lift them up in prayer. For the church, that we will continue to be instruments of Christ's light for all who have lived in darkness, hope for all who know pain, and love for all who have been forgotten. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to war and violence, particularly in the Holy Land and Ukraine that God will bring forth a springtime of peace so that all people may live in safety. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have fled homes because of violence, fear, or natural disasters, that God will give them safety, give them hope, and touch their hearts of many to welcome and support them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing that the risen Lord will heal our divisions and loosen the grip of hatred, prejudice, and racism, and open a new path of dialogue, cooperation, and unity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the newly baptized and for those who have completed their Christian initiation, may they be faithful disciples of Jesus and keep the light of Christ burning in their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are burdened by sickness, disease, or chronic illness, that the healing spirit of the risen Christ may bring light and wholeness to them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, including those who have recently died, John Leggett, and for Jim Kabushik, for whom this Mass is offered, may they share in the resurrection with all the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we thank you for always listening to us as we cry out to you. Grant what we truly need this day through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us sing Hallelujah is our song. You'll find it on the back page of the worship aid.
my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. Exalted with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord. Until 
therefore, our Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with her blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Michael and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with her servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to sing, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. communion song is new creation you'll find it in the worship aid
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that, renewed by Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we go, um, just many words of thanks. It's been a rich Lenten season, beautiful Holy Week, and so many people are involved in that. Our ushers, uh, those who decorated the church, lectors, extra, all the extraordinary ministers, all who help us day in and day out. We're very pleased to have Noah Oram, our seminarian, back with us. And Noah, we promise our continued prayers for you as you discern your call to the priesthood and some other very talented servers here today. I've, all of a sudden, I've got more servers than I need almost. It's a wonderful thing, although I'm still looking for a few for 11 o'clock, actually, I think. But uh, it's uh, been so nice to see many, so many young people coming back and, and, and looking at that vocation, that, that's, that way of service in the church. Um, Above all, with, with so many different people helping in so many different ways, um, sometimes I forget, I don't ever forget for long, but how blessed we are in our magnificent choir. This last year, when uh, Father Ryan Glazer was ordained to the priesthood, one of the most common questions he had after his Mass is, where did you get that choir? And it's all homegrown. Um, they do a beautiful, beautiful job. It's been a rich and full Holy Week, and I thank you so much for your music. I'm so grateful to all of our makers of music, all of our instrumentalists, all others involved, and to Angie, who pulls it all together and has worked so hard. When I mentioned, we've had 25 funerals so far this year, and Angie was trying to plan, she starts planning Holy Week on, uh, a day after Christmas, I think, trying to get all her work done, and she has worked so hard, and those results have shown. So thank you, Angie, for all you do. To our liturgist, Lauren Thompson, who hides in the back and takes care of all, putting all these things together. And of course, so grateful to always have Deacon Terry by my side and for his service. Thank you for all you do. And may you be richly blessed by your families, celebrating your families on this Easter Sunday. And uh, as I said, come on back again and then go out and tell that good news of Jesus. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. I want a nice strong amen to each of these. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. May he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, May you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia.
rejoicing in Christ. Carry your joy to the darkness of night. Tell the world, tell the world, he is alive. 